Hi everybody, Alex from Video Real Gamer here. Uh, today we've got a GTX 750. It's an EVGA Superclock model. Um, it's only the one gig variant, as you can see on top. Um, it comes with GPU Boost 2.0. Um, it is G-Sync ready with NVIDIA Game Stream, Shadow Play, and you know basically everything in the GeForce Experience suite. Um, so this clock, this uh, chip is overclocked from, I believe it's 1 gigahertz to 1.22 gigahertz. Um, and you can physically see the card right there. Um, box has a really nice design. Um, nice printed car uh, carton. Um, and you can see TXA, GPU boost, PhysX, etc, etc. Basically everything on the, you know, the NVIDIA suite that we've come to get used to. Um, and as you can see here, uh, you can take a look at the box. And um, we'll be moving on now to the actual stuff inside of the box in a moment. So, uh, basically you can see right there, there's a DVI to VGA adapter. Um, so if your monitor does not have a DVI uh, support, you can pop that in there. Or if you only have VGA. Um, so... As you can see here, um, this is the nice um, EVGA poster they give you. Um, and one of the problems I had with the packaging of this box is it's just sort of in this um, plastic and bubble wrap. Usually, uh, most cards I've bought in have come in a plastic carton that's padded on top of the plastic wrapped around it. Um, and you can see here it's a single fan. Uh, the card's very, very short. It's absolutely amazing for HTPC use. Um, and runs amazingly cool, as you'll see um, in a few moments. So this card is the first of NVIDIA's Maxwell series chips and is ridiculously power efficient. Um, it's so efficient that it's powered only by the PCI Express slot on the motherboard, um, which would make this card fantastic for, you know, the family or pre-built desktop that you might have, as long as it's not too outdated. Um, small, and small form factor builds. Also helping that fact is the fact that the card measures at about 6 inches long. Um, this card is ridiculously tiny in comparison to the 670 for the win I currently have. And before anybody starts yelling at me that it's not a fair comparison, it definitely is not. It's used to give you an idea of how well it keeps up with a $400 graphics card from about two years ago. One thing that might differ from us to most other um, sites would be that we benchmark the multiplayer in BF4. And why the multiplayer, you might ask? Well, a bunch of sites do the single player benchmark, and it's a lot easier to get perfect, exact, and repeatable uh, results. We're not doing that because this is a multiplayer game. The tests probably won't be perfect. What we're trying to do is to give you the best idea of how this game will be played by you. And what we're also trying to do is give you straight and to the point advice. I didn't think benchmarking part of a uh, throwaway part of the campaign would really benefit the readers. And, you know, I wanted to give you an idea of how the game performs in multiplayer. Well, you'll be spending most of your time in this game. As you can see, the numbers here um, come from playing Flood Zone on the 64-player Conquest for about 10 minutes. The GTX 750 gets beat by almost 40% at max FPS, but stays very close in average, and actually beats it in minimum frames. I told you this wasn't going to be perfect. Um, while this might not be the best representation of the difference between the cards, it shows that BF4 is very playable at medium at 1080p in a system, you know, as capable as mine. As a matter of fact, I played a few matches with this card and I really didn't have any serious frame drops, and I, and I was actually really comfortable playing it. it. It was pretty surprising. So now for something just a little bit more standard. Uh, we have Tomb Raider, which gives us results much more in line with my expectations. As you can see in Ultra, it's very playable with an average of 47 FPS, and it does a decent job keeping up with my card. And next we're on to Bioshock Infinite. 
750 plays a very respectable um, 56 frames average and hits a minimum of 30, which makes it very playable on max settings. Oddly enough, though, my 670 bottomed out at 13 frames per, uh, per second minimum, but it did so consistently on multiple runs, with two drops below 20 FPS every time. Why it did that is completely beyond me, and, I, and after hours of testing and um, drivers, nothing really seemed to change, so it might just be an inherent problem with the card itself. And finally, we have Crisis 3. Very shockingly, it ran at 36 FPS minimum, 71 max, and 51 was the average. It felt very smooth and playable. Also to note, this is done during one of the most taxing sequences early on in the game. Um, it's the actual sequence where you are outside in the rain. And finally, we have the noise levels and temperatures. The noise level is noticeable, but not annoying. It's a bit louder than my current card at load, but part of that might be because of the propeller style fan. It did keep the card pretty cool, and I don't ever remember it passing 70 Celsius at any point during any of our benchmarks. Um, and if you wanted to, you could adjust the custom fan curve using the software of your choice, and I would strongly recommend that. Well, this card blew me away at its price of uh, about 125 bucks. It played the most intense games in the benchmark at 1080p at medium with flying colors, even playing BF4's multiplayer on high, never dropping below 30 FPS in pretty much everything I threw at it, and all in all I was pretty impressed with the card. And it would be the card to go to for, you know, under 150 bucks for me in most builds. Um, the only card that would really challenge it would probably be the 265 or the actual 750 Ti, which at this point the price performance is not as good as it. So overall this card gets very high marks in everything except for the amount of noise it generated. But that's a very small complaint and the only one I can really come up with. The card comes very recommended by us, but it'd be a real gamer. So please like, share, and subscribe, and tell us what you think of the review in the comments.